If you have had trouble developing offline or debugging your back for app app, you're in the right place. Today, we will go through the whole process of configuring our environment for local development. In this video, I will show you how to install, configure, and run everything that you need, the best folder structure, and how to retrieve your logs so you can develop like a pro. Stay tuned. Before we even start, we will need a few pieces of software installed on your computer. I won't be going through the process of installing these pieces of software because it depends on your operational systems, but all the links that you need will be in the video description. The first one is Node.js, so you can go to nodejs.org, download and install the latest version of Node for your specific operational system. We also need npm, so we can go to npmjs.com, go to documentation, and then getting started you'll have all the instructions to install on your specific operational system. And also we will need the back for app uh, command line interface. You can find that in docs, guides, then go to platform and command line interface. Here are all the instructions that you need to get it running on your machine. When you have all the softwares installed, it's time for us to configure the back for app command line interface. And to do that, you will need an account key. So to get one, you should go to your back for app dashboard, click on your user up here, choose account keys. And here you can add multiple account keys. So if you have multiple developers, every single one should have their own account key. I'm a single developer, so I'm going to put just one key here. I'm going to call this Alex key. Click the plus sign and my key is created. I will need this key value. So I'm going to double click it and copy it. Now, I will use this value to configure the back for app command line interface. And to do that, I should go to my terminal and type before a configure account key. Hit enter and paste my value here. Hit enter again and it's now configured. To test that, I'm going to type before a new and it will allow me to create a new project or use a existing one. If I have an existing one on back for app already, I can choose E for existing and it will list all my projects so I can choose which project I want. But for this tutorial, I'm going to create a new one so you can see the folder structure it will create. So new one. I'm going to name this Alexis app. It will ask me for a directory name so it can create the folder structure. I'm going to do again, Alexis app, hit enter. And it will ask me if this is a blank project or if I have already existing cloud code. This is an empty project, so I just hit enter. Now the project is created. And if I go to my desktop, I should find my Alexis app in here. Two folders are already created for me. The public folder is where I should put all my HTML files, script files, and image files that I want to use if I have, for instance, a companion website that goes along with my app and I want to host it with Backfrap. All the static content for that website should be put in here. As you can see, there is already a index HTML file that I can change it and it will render when you set up your, uh, your uh, HTML hosting on Backfrap. And here on the cloud folder, it's where you should put all your cloud code files. As you can see, there is already a main.js file that contains some uh, example code of cloud code. And in here, you can also add NPM modules and any JavaScript and Node.js files that you want to use on, on, on cloud code. Even if you use it for cloud jobs, it, sh it should always be inside the cloud folder. Now that we've got our command line interface installed, we will use npm to install parse and its dependencies locally. Uh, remember guys, all these steps are on the video description and on the documentation in there as well. So we will start typing npm install minus g, so it's a global install, parse server, which will install parse server itself, mongodb runner, which will install mongodb and its dependencies to run, and Apollo server core, which will install the GraphQL support for parse. Hit enter. This should take a couple of minutes depending on your internet connection and also on your computer.
With that out of the way, we have to start MongoDB so Parse can start recording its data. We do that by typing mongodb-runner space start. Hit enter. This should take a couple of seconds. And then we can finally start Parse. We do that by typing Parse server, then passing as a parameter the app ID that we want. You can use any value you want here. I will leave it as application underline ID, but you should create your own. I just do not recommend that you use your production values uh, in here. Uh, you can change it later at any time if you need. Then passing a client key that I will need for my project. Then once again, any value will do. Then passing a master key, and once again, any value will do. And then database URI, which will connect to MongoDB, localhost, which is my local machine, dash, uh, slash test, which will create a test database. When you hit enter, parse will start and it will give you at the very end a URL that, that you can use for testing. So if you copy this URL here and go to any browser, open a new tab and paste it, you see an error unauthorized. But as parse is up, it's already doing the validation of all the requests. And I'm, as I'm not passing any uh, application ID nor any key, it will give me an unauthorized error, meaning that parse is working. Last but not least, I have to configure my application to use my local parse environment. We will do that by passing to parse the three uh, needed values it needs to work. The application ID, the key, uh, in this case, I'll be using the client key, but if you need uh, the JavaScript key or any other key, you have to create those instead, and the URL that Parse gave me locally. So I'm going to copy my application ID, which in my case is application ID. Go to my application here. This is a Flutter application, so I'll replace my production application ID for the one I created. It will ask me again for the client key. Remember, if you use any other key, you have to create those keys instead. So client key and replace the production environment for back for app for my local URL. Now my application is configured to use my local parse instance and it will save everything and consume all the codes from my local environment instead of production. All my logs and all my debug messages will be stored locally so it's much easier to find and correct any bugs that can possibly run. Now that you've got Parse Server running locally, it's time for us to create and change some cloud code and consume it locally. So here I have my Visual Studio open. You have to choose the IDE of your choice. I'm, I'd like to use Visual Studio. And here I opened my uh, project folder. So here you can see my cloud folder and the main.js file that Parse creates as an example. And in here you'll find an example cloud code function named hello that only re returns hello world. I'll be changing that to hello world Alex and save it. So in order to parse to recognize this folder and its JS file, uh, I have to pass some parameters when starting parse. So back to my terminal, uh, I here I have the same command line we used to start parse before, but now I have the parameter cloud where I'll have the full path all the way to my main JS file. And I also added verbose as an option, so it will have verbose logging, so I can see exactly what's happening. So once I hit enter, it will start. As you can see here, my cloud code was imported successfully. Here is my uh, parse local URL, and I can now retrieve that cloud code. So Back here, I have the syntax that I'll be using. Today, I'll be using curl to uh, consume that cloud code, but you can use any SDK or even GraphQL. I think curl is a more global way for everybody to use, so I'll be using that. So here I'll be doing a post where I'll be passing the parse application ID as application ID and X parse client key and client key and all my local URL, then functions and the name of the function, hello. So I'll just copy all this, go back to my terminal and run it from here. As you can see, the result is hello world Alex. If I go back to my uh, parse uh, window, you see uh, the verbose logging. So here is uh, 
parse telling me that it run a hello for undefined user. So the result was hello world Alex. And here is the response. And as you can see from here, I'm running this from the inside my project folder. So when you start parse, it will create a log folder with all its logs inside. So if I go back to Visual Studio, and here you can see my logs folder is created. You can also check it here on my finder. So I have now a logs folder. And inside here, you'll find the logs for parse. So I'm going to expand the logs folder here and check the logs. So this first one is empty, but the second one has all the logs for my cloud code uh, invocation using curl. So this is a very good way for you to see what parse is doing if you don't want to go through all the messages here on the parse command line. Uh, this will be stored on your machine, so you can check it at any time. And it will have a very detailed view of what's happening inside Parse. But these are not debugging logs. This can help you find some errors in cloud code when running. But now I'll show you how to attach the Parse process to Visual Studio so you can debug properly. Now that you've got your cloud code running locally, it's time for us to attach the parse process to your IDE so you can debug and use breakpoints. I'll be using Visual Studio, but you can use practically any IDE that supports debugging Node.js. So here in Visual Studio, you have this button here, the debug button. Then you have to cl click create a launch JSON file and choose Node.js. This is the uh, example configuration, but we are going to click add configuration and then attached to process. Now that uh, we changed that, we have to click display button. It will start and then automatically and then open this Dropbox and choose attach by process ID. When we do that and try to run it again, it will find two node processes. This one, as you can see, is for MongoDB runner. And the second one is for parse. So I'll, ch I'll select the parse one and it's now debugging. So if I go back to my main.js file and put a breakpoint here, oops, there you go. And from my command line, I try to consume my cloud code again. As you can see, now my breakpoint stopped. So I can run over the instruction. I can check its values here. So I can use this uh, tool to debug the cloud code locally with breakpoint support. Now that you've finished creating your cloud code, debugging it locally, it's time to move to production. And we will be using the back for app command line interface to do that. So here I have my hello world Alex. And if I go to my back for app and open my cloud code and my main.js file, you'll see here I have the hello world function, the example function. So I want to push this code to the production in back for app. To do that, here I am inside my uh, Alex's app folder. So if I list the directory, oops, list the directory, you see that I have my cloud folder, my public folder. If I go inside my cloud folder and catch my main JS file, you see I have hello world Alex, and I want to push that to production. So all I have to do is type before a deploy. Hit enter. It will find the changed files that are different from in my machine from the ones that are on the cloud. It will upload everything for me and version it, it uh, inside the back app structure. So if I go back to my uh, cloud code here and fully refresh it. And open my main JS file again. Now that you see uh, it's saying hello world Alex. So my code was pushed to production very easily using the back for app CLI. So there you go, guys. Now I showed you how to install, configure, and run everything locally, how to debug locally, and how to move to production so you can develop like a pro. I hope you liked this video and hope to see you on the next one of this series soon. See you soon. Bye-bye.